which be in the house of God. Hallelujah. He said, to tell somebody, it's so good to see you. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, praise God. Welcome, everybody, in the presence of the Lord. Thank God in His presence, His fullness of joy. Tell somebody I came to get my joy food. Uh, come on, say it like you mean it. I came to get my joy food. Hallelujah. 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 Come to get my joy food. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Well, praise God. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And all those that are watching us, I greet you to be preaching in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To those visiting us, welcome. Thank you so much. Good to see everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, I, I just want to encourage you this morning. You know, I don't know if you noticed, but for the past month, I think, for the past month, um, the daily devotion, the message, the text that we've been covering, got so much to do with fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We touched on the gifts of the Spirit, and I think the focus more was on a Spirit-filled life. We touched on individual of the individual, and then we looked at the corporates, assembling of ourselves, the Spirit, touching so much on the Spirit. And I think sometimes the things that happen in our lives, and we get so caught up in life, we get caught up in the wrong things, and we forget, we forget that we are spirit. The Bible says God is spirit. Those who worship Him worship Him in the spirit and in truth. He made us in His image and in His likeness. As He is, so are we in this world. We forget that man is spirit. You and I are spirit. We live in a body, yes. We have a mind, yes. But the crux of the whole matter is that we are spirit. We are a spirit being. Yes, we are human beings, Brother Jimmy, but we are spirit beings. The Bible says the spirit of a man is a candle of the Lord. That is where God connects with you. You forget that. And I want to encourage you this morning, not just this morning, but every day of your life, in every other meeting that we would attend, we would gather together as the saints. I want to encourage you to step into the Spirit. Let go of your natural. And begin to see the supernatural. I want to encourage you. Some of you have never prayed in tongues before. Let me tell you, tongues is for everybody. It's for everybody. The gifts of tongues is for everybody. You know when you're born into a family, you speak the language of that family. You're born into the family of God. Therefore, tongues is for you. The gift of tongues it is evidence of the infilling. For you to commune with God and speak with God. Many, very often, many people, they worry about who's next to them or around them. And they, they desire that gift. Well, how do you get it activated? You've got to activate it. It's similar to starting a car. You put the key into the ignition and you turn it. And you find it as you turn it sometimes because it, is, it has been standing for some time. It will be a bit hard to start, but then you just put your foot on the accelerator a little bit. And you give it some petrol because it goes, hey, hey, hey. And then you start and you try again. Hey, hey, and then eventually you put some petrol. And then it's activated. And when you turn the key, and boom. So you could start and you just say, bah, 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 bah,
activate the gift. Activate it. Paul speaking to Timothy, he said, do not neglect the gift which you have received to the laying on of hands. Reminded of the words of Moses. When they came to him and said, Moses, there are those that didn't go up with you, but they are prophesying in the tent. Moses, Moses said, Oh, I look to God and all God's people would prophesy. your circumstances. Did you call those things that be not as though they were? Did you walk in the spirit and not in the flesh? Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Get activated. Tell somebody, get activated. The Lord says it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. God is spirit. So he's saying it's not by might nor by power, but by me. Hallelujah. Acknowledge him. Honor him. Have reverence for him. Put him first. Because this 
one is a lie, brothers and sisters. A lie word is a lie. And it always has something that's, that has something for you. Hallelujah. So this morning, I'm reading from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. That alone speaks to us, brothers and sisters, that nothing is ours, hallelujah. Everything is God. The salary you earn for the month is God's. That is why God said, bring in your tithes to the storehouse, that they may be clean. And, and He also says, when you do such things, He will rebuke the devourer for your sake, because you may have withhold. But how do you know what tomorrow holds? You need God to rebuke the devourer for you. We do not know when we turn this way or that way, where the serpent is. Hallelujah. Don't wait for Him to bite us. So that is what God is saying. Therefore I say to you, take no thought for your life, what you're going to eat, or what you shall drink. For yet, for, sorry, no yet, for your body, what you shall put on, is not the life more than the meat, and the body than raiment than covering. Behold the flowers, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap. No gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father, Feel it there. I am not much better than them. Which of you taking thought can add one cubit to your stature? And why take your thought up for raiment? Consider the big lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Therefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today, and tomorrow is cast in the oven. Shall he not uh, much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, say, what we shall eat, or what we shall drink, or whither shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have needs of all of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be Take therefore no thought of tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of uh, for the things it's of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. There's enough of today for us to worry about tomorrow. Hallelujah. If you are a spirit being, tomorrow is taken care of you. There has to come a point where we realize that God is for us. Who can be against us? Hallelujah. Now you may wonder why God said, God said, you know Solomon was a wealthy man. There was nothing that he didn't have. He had wisdom. He had knowledge. But God says, even he was not, um, let me get there, that Solomon in all his glory was not a radiant. But why did God say that? He said that because, thank you Jesus. We serve such a mighty God, hallelujah. You know, God maybe brought me to this understanding that I stand on this word. It became who I am today. Every day you grow in the spirit. What God is saying there, that the little he grows from the ground, its, it's roots gets its water from God. It is so strong and so beautiful that its health comes from God. Now you can have all the riches and be clothed with the best clothes, but inside you know what's happening. We don't know what's happening in our body. There's an aging process, there's sicknesses, there's things like cancers. Other people have those things. You, you know, if you really go out to the world, you see what is destroying people. That's why God says, take no thought, believe no other word but His word. His word says that we should take no thought. We shouldn't even talk and say that, you know what, I'm 45 this year, and they say that 45 you're going to have wrinkles. Your hands are going to be, um, you know, they're going to fray away, if I could use that word. Your, your posture is going to be bent. You're going to lose so many strands of healing. But what if I tell you that that's a lie? Brothers and sisters, we serve a living God. Hallelujah. That's what God told me. This is the lead. It gets his power. It gets his strength from God. Because 
because it looks so beautiful, and it's like this is better. It does a posture, it takes, hallelujah. It's, 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 hallelujah. But you know, you may have everything on the outside, but if you don't have that inner glory of God, if you don't have His word in you, there's nothing you have today, brothers and sisters. That's the truth. Because we take nothing with us, but when you have Jesus, hallelujah, you have the inner beauty.
sins unto to God. Each day, God, we bow before you. And we pray, we say thank you, Jesus, for our daily prayer, oh God. We're so grateful that God supplies all of your needs. He didn't say, he said our daily bread. He didn't say bread for tomorrow. Did he say bread for tomorrow? No. He said he supplies our daily bread. Trust in God for your daily bread. Stop worrying about the tomorrow's bread. Today's bread is that all that God said you must worry about. He never said worry about tomorrow's bread. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I thank you, Lord. Bless your people, Lord. Bless those that so Lord, into the ministry. Those that so Lord Jesus, to, to the past, to the priestly offerings, God. Those that so Lord Jesus, to the rent of this church, the lights, oh God. Oh God, the finances of, of, of ministry online, God. Oh God, bless them, Lord Jesus, mightily and abundantly, oh God. Oh God, and add to their finances, add to their, to their lives, add to the years of their lives, oh God. I pray over each and every finance today, every seed sown today, Jesus, oh God. And I pray, God, that you are the one who multiplies, oh God. And God, and you give bread to the sower, Lord. You give more seed to the sower. In Jesus' mighty name. Galatians chapter number 5 and verse 16 tells us to walk in the Spirit. And this morning, as I woke up, the Lord uh, told me to speak to you about His omnipresence. About His omnipresence. I want to go to the book of Acts, chapter number 17, as a foundation, and just to give you uh, kind of an insight. This particular portion of scripture, I think about a week or two ago, I spoke to you about how when all had come to Greece, to Athens, and you are sharing, and before you could share or minister the word of God, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the people in Athens, how he found one of the shrines, there was an inscription there which read to the unknown God, and then Paul began preaching them and he told them how he had perceived that they were indeed religious. For he saw as he walked amongst the shrines there was a particular place that had the description to the unknown God and he said, Him I have come to declare to you. Him I present to you. In other words, I know him and I want to make him known to you. And if there's one thing that we have and that you and I have as children of God, as a child of God, there's one thing that you have, I have, that the world does not have. And it can never have. Although it seeks for us, and although it pursues us, the world can never have it. But you and I have it. And what is that? It's the peace of God. You and I have the peace of God. That peace which transcends all human understanding. We have the peace of God. Jesus said in the Beatitudes, He said, Blessed are the peacemakers. See that? 
Blessed are the peacemakers. In other words, he's saying the peace distributors. You are a distributor of peace. You cannot distribute something you do not have. You get that? He said, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the peace distributors, for they shall be called children of God. You see that? You are a distributor of peace. Not confusion, not division, not dissension, not heresy, not discord, but peace. Not chaos, but peace. A distributor of peace. Praise God. Remember, Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I give you. My own peace give I unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. You see that? The world can never give you that peace. You'll never have that peace in the world. The world will never know that peace. But we know it. Why? Because in the midst of circumstances, in the midst of challenges, we understand that God is. We understand that God is. In other words, God is present. God exists. And by virtue of that truth, we have peace. It doesn't matter what the doctor may say. It doesn't matter what the lawyer may say. It doesn't matter what the government may say. It doesn't matter what the press or the media may say. We have the Word of God near us. The Bible says the Word of God is near to us in our heart and in our mouth. Let not your heart be troubled. Come. We will not let our heart be troubled by what's happening around us. We will stand on the Word of God. We will stand on the promises of God. Hallelujah. Now I'll share with you, Paul speaks to them. And he said, he will present to you. And then, watch here. He goes now from, I'll start from verse. Okay, let's just go to, let's go from 22. Let's go from verse 22, Acts 17. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Ethiopians and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this, with this inscription to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, him I proclaim to you, God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. I want you to underline that. I want you to highlight that. I want you to make a mental note of that. I want you to embed it in your heart. He gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he, he has made from one blood, He has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might go for Him and find Him. There's a pre-appointed time to everything. And there is a boundary, in other words, a limit to everything. Very often you find people will, you know, have this perception that they've got it all made. But there's a limit to everything. There's a limit to what money can do. 
There's a limit to what education can do. There's a limit to what knowledge can do. There's a limit to everything. Because once you reach that limit, you understand that you need somebody bigger than yourself. You need someone bigger than what you have. You, have, you need something bigger. You need something greater. You need the intervention of someone greater. That is what Paul was saying. Why? There's a limit so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for Him and find Him. Hallelujah. Though He is not far from each one of us. Hide that. You see, when you come to your wit's end, you start groping, Oh God, I need you. And you find him. Hope says, though he is not far from each one of us. He's not far from each one of us. That speaks of his omnipresence. You may be there in your home. Another brother or sister may be there in their workplace. The children may be at school, but understand, God is there with the one at home, with the one at work, and the one at school. He is near to each one of us. Watch him. For in him, I like this, I like this, for in him, we live and move and have our being. In Him we live and move and have our being. Remember Paul says He gives to each one life, breath and all things. Now he says He is near to each one of us. For in Him we live. In Him we move. In Him, we have our being. In other words, in Him, we have breath. Let me do this with you. Just close your eyes. Close your eyes. Just close your eyes. And take a deep breath. Breathe it out. Take a deep breath. Breathe it out. Now you see, science will tell you what you breathed in was oxygen. But the Bible tells us, God formed man out of the clay, out of the dust of the earth. And God breathed life into man. And man became a living being. So, what I'm trying to tell you is close your eyes again. Breathe in. You're just breathing God. You've just breathed in God. You know, help me notice, you know, listen, all these things that they get, you know, to help people, psychologists and scientists, and all these people, they try to help people and they tell them, um, if you're angry, take a deep breath, count to ten. Ever heard of that? Take a deep breath, count to ten, and you'll calm down. No. What you are doing, you are breathing in God. You are breathing in His peace. See that? If ever you are worried or concerned about something, yeah. when to have a little puff on a little cancer stick is not going to ease your nerves. Oh! 
and folks said, come. Yeah. And they went into the water. Yeah. And as Philip baptized him, oh, the unit went down beneath the water. The Bible says when he came out of the water, Philip was gone. Yeah. Do you see this God I'm talking about? Don't worry about your flesh.
2 Corinthians 3 verse 17 tells us, Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You see, not only does God dwell within you, but He's all around you. He's all around you. He says, where can I, can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me, even the night shall be light about me. Indeed, the darkness shall not hide from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. The omnipresence of God. The omnipresence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God is present, when God is present, wonderful things happen. The book of Psalms 46 verse 1 says, The Lord is our refuge and our strength. A very present help in times of trouble. Woo, I love that. Man, that's enough to make me shout, scream, praise God, dance, give Him praise. Say so He's a very present help in times of trouble. That's why when trouble comes knocking on your door, you don't mind the trouble. You don't mind trouble because God is going to trouble trouble on your behalf. Oh, Jesus, come to somebody. The Bible says the enemy will come one way and scatter before you so on seven different roads. Child of God, you are hidden in God. God hides you in his pavilion. You know where's the pavilion? On the grand stairs, on the top. You see, only with your eyes will you behold the reward of the wicked when he comes. When you are in God, when you are in God, life becomes real to you. I've read accounts, one account of a man of God who went to go preach the gospel to a village. And the people refused to listen. He called the people to the river. He called them to the river banks. And he stood on the river banks and he began to preach. This man began to preach. And as he preached, the fish that were in the river, the fish in the river came to the surface of the river. And they were dancing with their tails on the water. They were dancing on the surface of the water. Excited at the message that this man was preaching. And the whole village became saved. Same man went to another village to go preach. He wouldn't receive the gospel. So he told them, do me a favor. Take a donkey. The donkey is stubborn. So take a mule. And go put it in the stable and you don't feed it. For a certain number of days, he specified the number of days, you don't feed it. When those days are over, you come to the center of this village. And you bring the straw that the donkey normally eats. You place it one side. And they did that. The donkey came out. This man of God. He took bread 
and you do drink signifying symbolic of the body and the blood of Christ and he placed the communion on the other side and when the donkey came out natural science biology will tell you that naturally the donkey should go for its father to go for the straw. The donkey came straight out of the stable where they locked it. He went straight to the communion and about. Began to be spoken by the Lord 
and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also, bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, with various miracles, not just miracles, it says various miracles. It means that there is no miracle that God cannot do for you when you are living in Him, moving in Him. You just breathe in and you hear Him say, I am the Lord thy God. Is my arm so short that He cannot save? I am the Lord thy God, full of mercy and compassion. My loving kindness knows no end. My mercies are new every morning. Both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to His own will. Do you see that? Wow, I love that. I want to close with this one, Psalm 18, verse number 20. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. When you come to Christ, when you receive Jesus, God rewards you according to your righteousness. You become a child of God. Don't talk to me somehow. You become a child of God. You are His. Watch. Can I just do this quickly? I just want to finish this next. After the portion where Paul says, In Him we live and move and have our being, as also, watch, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think, see, don't take for granted, that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Speaking of Jesus, when you come to Jesus, Instead of you dying in your sins, He removes your sin and raises you to life. He gives you His righteousness. You stand in His righteousness. That Psalm, that's what Psalm 1820 is talking about. I want to just read from the message translation. Watch this, from the message, verse 20 to 24. It says this, God made my life complete. God made, not work made or shall make or might make, God made, past tense, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before Him. You see, when I placed all the pieces before Him, God made my life complete. When I got my act together, He gave me a fresh start. in Jesus, a fresh start in God. All you need to do is get your act together. Recollect yourself. Stand up to your feet. Shake the dust from yourself. Are you hearing me, somebody? When I got my act together, he gave me a fresh start. Now, <laughs> now, I'm alert to God's ways. You see, I'm alert, I'm awake to God's ways. I don't take God for granted.
wrong tent. See, that's I told you to remember that. I don't take God for granted. Every day I review the ways He works. I try not to miss a trick. Every day I review the way God works. And I try not to miss out because God is always moving. Hallelujah. I feel much. I feel put back together. And I'm watching my step. Listen to this. God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. God rewrote the text of my life. If you can understand how close God is, how near God is to you, you can walk with him, talk with him, commune with him, have fellowship with him. You'll be amazed at the things that God will do. If you're in business, you'll be amazed how all of a sudden the customers start coming. Listen, let me tell you something. We are still in peace. The Bible says the angels of God are ministering spirits given to the ears of salvation. There are angels that will move on your behalf if you move in the ways of God. They'll bring the customers. It could be someone in your family that's probably lost somewhere. You don't know where that person is. You can dispatch the angels, the angels will bring them right back. I'm telling you, I've seen it happen. Now I'm friendly, I've seen it happen. An uncle of mine, we didn't know where he was. We just heard him somewhere and somewhere and somewhere. We didn't know where he was and we prayed. For over seven to ten years, nobody knew where he was. He dispatched the angels of God. Guess what? It wasn't long. He came like that. We have angels working on our behalf, ministry. You know what it means when it says the ministry spirit is given to the, to the ears of salvation? It means whatever you need, the angel will work. They work on your behalf. Why must you sweat when you have an angel to help you? Some of you, your angels are so lazy. If you were to dispatch them, they'll think it's a stranger speaking. It's true. The day you say angels of God are dispatching, oh, who's it talking to? But you gotta make it a daily thing. You know, you gotta listen. I'm telling you, look, it sounds bad. Don't you think I can call a legion of angels and then fight on my behalf? You gotta understand that. We don't worship angels, we worship God because of the Son. Angels minister to us. They're to help us. Hallelujah. We have the word of God. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the gift of prayer. We have the gift of praise. We can praise our way out of circumstances. You can dance your way out. Dance your way in. and then you're on the other side of the door and then praise God. No! Praise Him once you're on your way to the door. Amen. As you do that, the door comes closer. Amen. God has given us so much. You know, we focus, that's the problem. People focus on the natural things that the eyes can see, the ears can hear, and the hands can touch. 
things that can fill the belly, things that can clothe the body. That's what they focused on. And because they don't have those things, they think, oh no, I you know I'm so really I don't have. But when you consider what God has given you, salvation, He's given you Jesus. Along with Jesus, He's given you angels, given you His Word, given you the Holy Spirit, given you so much. If you can just focus on the things which are above where Christ is. Then you'll be able to live this Christian life in the true victory that God preordained, purposed, and planned, and destined for you and I as His children. I trust you, but son. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Come on, let us stand. Hallelujah. From today, remind yourself, even if it means every day, tell yourself, I may be a human being like the rest of the world. I may appear to be a human being, but I am not a human being. I am a spirit being. I walk after the spirit. I walk after the dictates of the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. I do not live in condemnation anymore. Christ has freed me. Christ has redeemed me. I am the freedom of the law. I am the healer of the law. I am the savior of the law. You understand? You want to do that thing? That's how you build your spirit up. Remind yourself your spirit being. Everything that happens in the natural comes from the spirit. So if you can start living in the spirit, walking in the spirit, talking in the spirit, praying in the spirit, singing in the spirit, being all things in the spirit, you'll see how they manifest. The things you desire start manifesting in your natural. Understand you are a peculiar nation. A peculiar nation. You are peculiar. You are cut from another cloth. You are in this world, but not of this world. It's another way that you operate. You don't operate as the world operates. Don't be too quick to retaliate, fight back. Learn from Jesus. Silence is global. You remember the man of God who went into the cave. Then there was an earthquake and the Lord was not in the earthquake. You remember, there was a wind and the Lord was not in the wind. Then there was a still, small voice. My sheep hear my voice. Keep quiet. Silence is gold. Like a lamb before it shearers is silent. He remains silent and opened not his mouth. Jesus was silent. And in the end, the works which God the Father had worked spoke louder than all the things that they had accused him of and beaten for. Father, we just want to thank you this morning for creating us in your image 
and in your likeness. We purpose with all of our hearts to serve you, to worship in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray that you'll open our eyes that we may see that truly, truly God is with us. Open the eyes of your people, I pray. Let them see not the things that are, but cause them to see the greater one who resides within them. Christ Jesus, who is greater than those that be without. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We see Jesus Christ, your son, lifted up high, exalted, high, seated upon the throne, full of glory, honor, and power. I pray that as your people will go forth this day, let the month of March be truly a supernatural month. I pray, Lord, for uncommon faith, uncommon miracles, uncommon breakthrough, uncommon Lord success, uncommon victory. Let it be the month of the uncommon. Let it be the month of the uncommon. Lord, the things that are common with man will not be the portion of your people. For you, O Lord, by you, the Lord of God, we shall run against the truth. We shall scale the wall of God. We thank you, Lord. The power does not come from us. But the excellency of the power is of you. In Jesus' blessed name. Now be the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you, both now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life as you dwell continually in the house of the Lord, both now and forever. In Jesus' name.
Promotions are coming. Promotions are coming. Comes not from the God of the South, the leaders of the West, but the comes from the Lord. Promotions are coming. I know what I'm talking about. Promotions are coming. Thank you. 